Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Root Beer here, and we are going to be finishing off the 2012 Canadian Open Mathematics Challenge. So, I think it's been a good paper so far. Uh, if you haven't tried C4, I would encourage you, this is your last chance, try the question out, pause the video, then come back and join me. Let's, let's see what the question has in store for us, though. Uh, okay, so part C, question four. For any positive integer n, there we go, uh, an n tuple of positive integers, x1, x2, all the way down to xn, is said to be super squared, super squared, if it satisfies both of the following properties. So it needs to be decreasing, strictly decreasing, strictly decreasing. So x1's got to be the biggest, x2 is the, the next biggest, and so on. And uh, the sum x1 squared plus x2 squared plus all the way up to xk squared. Then we go up to n. Uh, xk squared is a perfect square for each one, uh, each k between 1 and n. So, for example, 12, 9, 8 is super squared since 12 is greater than 9 is greater than 8. And each of 12 squared or 12 squared plus 9 squared or 12 squared plus 9 squared plus 8 squared are perfect squares. So all three of them, all the three of the possible sums are perfect squares. Nifty. Uh, okay, so we got a brand new concept to play with. Three parts here, so we'll, we'll read all parts together. I suspect A will just be, you know, can you do a very simple version of this or something like that. Uh, so A, determine all values of T so that 32T9 is super squared. So just like our previous, our, our given example. All right. And uh, what else will we need? Uh, so B part here, determine a super squared four tuple that has X1 less than 200. So it's not enough to just get a four tuple. We have to also make sure X1 is, is small enough, I guess. And C part, determine whether there exists a super squared 2012 tuple. Hmm. So my gut reaction would be there, sh there should be. Because basically what they're doing is, is they're... Because each, each of the, these squares has to be itself a perfect square, right? So, you know, if we've got uh, 12, well, 12 squared, obviously, a perfect square, but if we got 12 and 9, you square both of them, you get a, a Pythagorean triangle with 15 on the other side. And that's what 9 squared plus 12 squared is. So when you do nine, uh, when you do twelve squared plus nine squared plus eight squared, what you're really doing is this first bit is fifteen squared, and you just start attacking on an eight here. And so with the fifteen there and the eight, you get another right angle triangle, and you get seventeen squared. So I think because so for C part, it's just determine whether or not there's a two thousand twelve. Tuples, no restriction. So I think if you just chose, so also these these side lengths need to be decreasing. But I I assume if you chose a big enough starting pair, you could work it so there was always always. Uh, and it, I mean, the, these lengths here, the lengths that we're adding on are getting smaller and smaller and smaller is what I'm trying to convey. But I assume you could just keep doing this with, with right angle triangles and just keep appending new triangles onto the old ones and, and getting integers the whole way. Is that, that's what we need is the 12 and the 9 and the 8 and the 15 and the 17. Now, I don't think there's a, a Pythagorean tri uh, triple with 17 in it that has 17 as the bigger of the two legs. But again, I think we could we could scale something maybe and get get something new like a, you know five or something like that. It wouldn't be five, but just get smaller and smaller things. So I, I assume we could probably do that. Maybe maybe there's a reason we can't, but that's that's just a gut reaction and. You know, it's 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 a good thing to always have these gut reactions. Like not everyone does. I'm I'm not saying that it's obvious that you should make this Pythagorean uh, triangle connection. I just you know I, I saw this question and I thought okay, 
squares and the 12 squared and the 9 squared and then the adding the 8 squared doesn't really do anything. We could also, I guess, visualize it as diagonals of um, rectangles and then rectangular prisms and, and, and then four dimensional rectangular prisms. I think that intuitively is a little annoying. But being able to have a gut reaction and, and being able to express it in pictures or in words can get you marks sometimes, even if you actually have no idea. So, so my description there, and my saying, well, I think it should work, just make a make it scale large enough, might be worth a mark or two. And for some people, in the right circumstances, a mark or two is, you know, difference between uh, their mark and going back to the remark room, uh, which can be good things, or can be, you know, the difference between no scholarship and scholarship on some papers. Okay? But uh, I think I'm going to let that sort of stew or mill about in the back of my brain, and we're going to go back to A and, and try and slowly build up our understanding of these super squared uh, sequences. Okay, so A, we want uh, 32, T, and 9, I think it was. Yes, 32, T, and 9. Okay. So, uh, 32, T, 9. Uh, what would we need? Well, 32 squared, that's not a problem. So I need 32 squared plus T squared to be... Uh, a perfect square, so maybe call that u squared. And then I need 32 squared plus t squared plus 9 squared to be a perfect square, maybe call that v squared. Well, really, we've got u squared plus 9 squared is equal to v squared. And we also need to satisfy that first condition, the strict difference condition here. Hmm. Okay. So, what can we do? And incidentally, this, just to draw back to my, my C picture, is like saying 32, and then there's a T. You can get a right angle triangle there. And then you can go a distance 9, and that also gives you another right angle triangle. And then the, the U and the V fit in there. Okay, um, hmm. What? Ever shall we do? So I'm, I'm just trying to think of you know where where, where can we go with this? Uh, what can we do? Well, 32 squared. What's 32 squared and 9 squared? Is that is that also a, a perfect square or something like that? So 32 squared is uh, 1,024, and 9 squared is 81. Uh, so this is 1,100, uh, you know, 105, which is not a perfect square. Okay, but uh, we could ask, what are some perfect squares after that? Right, so we could, um, we could say, all right, what are, what are some potential values for t? So t could start at 9, 10, 11, 12. There's going to be a lot of options, so I don't think this is going to be the best way to go about the question later on. Give myself a little more space. But, you know, even if we're just going to net ourselves two marks, this might be a good way to, to go about doing this. So there's t. t squared would be what? And then 105 squared is plus t squared would be, or sorry, 105 plus t squared would be what? So actually, we can't start at 9. We could have 100. And so then that would be 1205, which is not a perfect square. It might also be helpful to start writing out perfect squares that you're aware of. Uh, 121, so that would be 1226, not a perfect square. 144, so that would be 1249, not a perfect square. So this, this is getting sort of tedious, but well, that's okay. Not a perfect square. Maybe maybe it would be easier to look at perfect squares that are close to uh, 1105 instead of just trying all these out. And, of course, I mean, we still have more to do, like 25 and, and everything else. So w which would be easier? Just listing squares after 1105? 
Right? Might, might that be the way to go? So, uh, 1105. Uh, the next one, I think, should be 33 squared, which is 11... Or 1089. Let me just double check. 99 nine, and then 99. Nine. Oh, that's 1089. Um, so, 33 squared. 34 squared, maybe? Let's... What do we have here? Or actually, here's an even better idea. Okay, uh, you know that might work. I'm sure both methods would work. This first one's going to take a while, but now that I think about it, um, u squared plus nine squared has to be equal to v squared, right? So if I rearrange this, this nine that we've sort of added in as our third term is a difference of squares. So nine squared is v squared minus u squared, but this factors, and I think this is going to be a more useful thing. Uh, they have to be integers, and 81 only has so many factors. And we know that v is bigger than u, so these, these are both positive. So we could have uh, v minus u is 1. Well, actually, we can make another chart, but this is a much shorter chart. v minus u and v plus u, so we could have 1, 3, or 9. Let's give the 3 a bit more space shall we? 81, 27, and 9, and that's, that's really it. So what would we get from V? Well, V is the sum of the two numbers over 2, and then U is, is the difference of the, the, the one number from the other divided by 2. So we'd get 82 over 2, that's 41. So maybe V is 41. And uh, the U that we get has to be uh, bigger than 32 squared, certainly. Uh, we could also get uh, 30 over 215, so that's certainly not going to do it. And then we could also get V is 9. So neither of those options should work. Uh, here the, the U is going to be 0. Uh, 27 minus 3 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. Oh, there's 12 and 9 again. And then uh, 81 minus 1 is 40. Or sorry, 80 divided by 2 is 40. So we should get u squared. And u is 40 and v is 41. Okay, well, uh, 40 squared is 1,600 minus 32 squared, which is 1024, should be equal to t squared. Right? Uh, and that would be 6, 7, so that's 10, and a 9, 576. And that's really it. These, these options here don't work. The, the U's, U is somehow less than 32. That can't happen. So, and we should probably explain why it can't happen. u squared is greater than 32 squared. Why? Because u squared is 32 squared plus another non-zero square. Uh, it's at least 32 squared plus 89 squared, or 81 squared. But uh, t squared, 5, 7, 6, that's going to work perfectly fine. So t is 24, and it looks like this is, that, that's it. This is the only option that, that is there for us. Okay, so I'm glad I spotted that difference of squares. Otherwise, the chart method might have gone on long. Although, we, we would have found at least 24 after a page, but we would have kept going because there may have been more possibilities. We, we didn't know. Well, I say I, I didn't know. You, you might have known. Uh, if, especially if you followed my advice to try the problem. Uh, let's get rid of this so that I can read B again. Uh, determine a super squared 4 tuple with x1 less than 200. Now, so far, we've only been handed uh, triples, not 4 tuples. Although, eventually, we want to talk about 2012 tuples. So, one thing we might want to do is figure out how to create a, a tuple of arbitrary length. You know, suppose you want a, a k-tuple that's a super-tuple, or sorry, super-squared, 
you would start with, you know, k to the 4 plus k cubed minus k, and then the next one would be blah, and then if we could figure out a, a, a way to make a giant sequence like that, that would be great. Not so convinced something like that could be done. Um, I mean, it might be, might be able to be done, but I can't think of a nice way to approach that. Something else we might want to do, if, if we actually think there is a 2012 tuple, which I do, is look into ways to make tuples from old tuples. You know, take a, a three tuple, make a four tuple, take a four tuple, make a five tuple, or take a, a, a rather small four tuple and make a four tuple of arbitrary size. Which actually, that's, you know, that's not a, a bad thing. Uh, so a quick observation or a note, which I would write down usually with a star so it's clear that it's not part of any other part of the question, but uh, if x1, xk, xn is super squared, then so is cx1, cx2, cxn for any integer uh, c greater than or equal to 1. Okay. Why? Well, x1 less than, or greater than x2, greater than x3. And if you make a claim like this, you should always back it up a little bit. Well, if you multiply by a positive number, that never changes the direction of the inequality sign. So that condition satisfied. And um, or we, we know x1 uh, squared plus all the way up to xk squared is equal to some square, I don't know, call it maybe yk squared. for some integer yk, well then c squared yk squared, well, cyk squared, I guess, is equal to c squared yk squared, which is equal to c squared x1 squared plus all the way up to xk squared, which is cx1 squared all the way up to cxk squared, which was my brand new sequence. So that's the other condition satisfied. So I know I know how to take a, a three tuple and make a, a bigger three tuple. And we could probably make a similar argument if x1, x2, all the way up to xn all had a common divisor. We could divide by that common divisor and the property should still hold. But uh, I'll, I'll add that in if I need it, but I don't think I would need something like that right now. Now, determine a, a super squared 4 tuple. Could I start with 32, 24, 9, or even the given 12, 9, 8, and do something? Because we could get something like C times 12, C9, and C8 is a, a 3 tuple, or a triple. that is super squared. Can we find a C and, I don't know, an, um, another number Z, so that C12, C9, C8, and Z is a super squared Four tuple, All right? So that's that's our our question there, and I think I think this is a good method. Now maybe it's not going to work with twelve, nine, and eight. Um, I would suspect it to work with twelve, nine, and eight, or maybe thirty-two, twenty-four, nine, the one that we just figured out. And I figure I figure one of those two might be able to be sort of extended to a four tuple. But see how this would work if we pay very close attention to how we do this assuming this can be done, 
then if we pay very close attention, the, a write-up for C might be easy because maybe we can then use the same method to change a four-tuple into a five-tuple, a five-tuple into a six-tuple, all the way down the line to a 2012-tuple. Additionally, maybe there's an assumption we need to make while doing this, and we say, oh, okay, now I see you can't get, get anything beyond a 41 super squared tuple. Okay? So we want to pay very close attention to this, assuming it works. But, uh, let, you know, let's experiment. Let's, let's see what we've got going on. Okay. Um, where to go, where to go, where to go. Uh, so I need C8 greater than Z. That's something, that's, that's a condition we need. And C12 squared plus C9 squared plus C8 squared is equal to, what did we say? It was 17, right? Uh, 144 plus 81. 144 C squared plus 81 C squared plus 64 C squared uh, is going to be 144 plus 145. Yeah, 289 C squared. And so that's 17 C squared, just as I, I thought. So I need to find Z squared plus uh, 17 C squared needs to be equal to squared. Now, just to borrow the notation we had earlier, I guess I don't even need this Z. I could call it X4. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep with Z, but I think when we generalize, this is going to be X4. So I need, I need something less than C8. Well, that's fine. I can make C8 as big as I want. Question is, if I make it too big, could I still find a, a Z? It works like that. And, oh, we also need C12 to be less than or less than or equal to, well, wouldn't it, it wouldn't be equal to, so less than 200. Um, so the 200 condition, I'm going to try and leave alone for a bit because I don't need that to understand how to do C part of the question. Um, but we would call this, I think Y4 squared is what I used for my notation. We'll, we'll just call it Y squared right now. Hmm. Okay. So could we, will difference of squares help us out? I feel like there's too many variables for difference of squares to help us out right now. Uh, y minus 17c. Okay, so, hmm. Now, earlier, things worked out when we had the difference being 1. So could I make y minus 17c equal to 1 and y plus 17c equal to z squared? Could I just go for that and grab that right away? Hmm. So... What would that mean? That would mean that y is 17c plus 1. And then combining these two, we'd get uh, 34c plus 1 is equal to z squared. Can that necessarily happen for some c? And we also need z is less than 8c. So z squared is less than 64c squared. So 34C needs to be, or C, 34C plus 1 needs to be less than 64C squared. I think that could probably be satisfied. Bring it all over to one side. We've got ourselves a quadratic. Um, but does this have nice roots? I'm willing to suspect it does not. Well, let's see. Let's see what we can do. Um, so C... It has to be, well, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, minus 
A, C. All over 2. So 17 plus or minus. You can divide by 2 on the inside of the square root by actually dividing by 4. So we'll get 17 squared. Minus minus turns into a plus. 17 squared plus 64. So C... Uh, has to be so it's an upward facing parabola here are the roots so C can, uh, has to be hmm, difficult to write um, plus or minus square root of 289 plus 64 3 Ah, but C is positive. So I just need a C greater than 17 plus the square root of 353. But, uh, ooh, I'm not liking this. Because... 12C has to be less than 200, so 3C has to be less than 50, so C has to be less than 17, and oops. That's definitely, those, those two are incompatible. So does this mean it can't be done? Of course not, because the question didn't say can you. The question said determine of. But maybe we can't extend things like this, or maybe my assumption here was not a good one. Hmm. Okay, so what else could we do? So the, the Z, the 17C, and the Y is a Pythagorean triple. So it would have to conform to your usual Pythagorean triples, and we need uh, Z to be less than 8C. So Z is definitely the smaller one. Uh, hmm. Now, do I have to come up with a unique triple? So Z, 17C, and Y, not a problem. And, well, 12C is less than 200. So, C is definitely between 1 and 50 over 3. So, between 1 and 16. So, there's almost too much. There's too, there's too many variables. Almost. Y doesn't matter. Y just needs to be a part of a Pythagorean triple. But the 17 and the C, that's kind of difficult. Because there isn't, there isn't part of a C in the Z or the Y that we can, oh, compare to unless. Well, we're, we're just experimenting around. So let's say, suppose, well, not say that, but let's say suppose. Suppose Z were, I don't know, A times C. Well, then we're going to get A, B. And this should be C if we're following our Pythagorean. Let's, let's go with P, Q, and R. So if Z was P, C, then let's say Q is 17 and Y is R, C. Because if both Z and 17, C have a factor of C, then the, the square Y that we get is going to have a factor of C. But then we need Z squared plus 17, C squared to be equal to y squared, but that's taking out a factor of c squared, p squared plus q squared is equal to c squared r squared. Oops, not c squared, r squared. Okay, but this sort of just introduces another Pythagorean triple, but q is 17. So, right? But 
but I can't think of another Pythagorean triple. Otherwise, we could have just used that. Hmm. So maybe Z doesn't have the P. C, maybe it's 17P. Oh, that, that might be nicer. We'll see. That might be nicer. So like QBC, and we got 17R. So then now we're taking out the factor of 17. So now we've got P squared plus C squared is equal to R squared. And now I just choose a C in this range that is part of a Pythagorean triple with a smaller number. That, that should do it. Right, so let's, let's look at some Pythagorean triples. Um, 3, 4, 5, that would work out perfectly fine. Yeah, so 3, 4, 5 could work. And then we'd have uh, C is 4. So we'd get 68. Everything would be multiplied by C. And then, so you'd have 12 times 4, so that'd be 48. And then 36. And then uh, 32. And then Z would be 3 times 17, which is 51. Okay, so there's a bit more to it. So I need to pick a Pythagorean triple, but I also need... 17p to be less than 8c. So there's this, this sort of limit on what we can have. Hmm. Okay, so 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 8, 10 should also be... Yeah, it should also not work because I guess we could rearrange this as um, p over c needs to be less than 8 over... 17 and so the p and the c they're they're just the numbers in this column but if they've got a common ratio it does it's it's not going to help us so we're looking for what we call primitive pythagorean triples uh, so the next one is 5 12 13 would be the the r uh how about that 5 over 12 less than 8 over 17 i haven't a clue uh that's 85 and 96 so that works so if my c is 12 we're gonna have 144 108 um 8 times 12 is 96 and then we should be using 5 times 17 for my z which would be 85 and there we go so that works, um, definitely lower, and I trust the Pythagorean triples that we've got. So this should, in theory, work. So that, that's, that's an answer to B. Good, good, good. Uh, now for C. Um, I think the answer is yes. We'll show how to take any n tuple that is super squared and make a super squared n plus one tuple. And since a three tuple. Well, either of the three tuples will do. Uh, we probably. I wonder. We should be able to to do the same thing we just did in the last question with the thirty two, twenty four, and uh, nine if we wanted to. Uh, Twelve, nine, and eight exists, and so would a two thousand twelve tuple by repeated application. Okay, so this is what I would write, and then it's up to me now to create the method. So, if x1, x2, and xn is super squared, I'm just going to say ss, 
and as remarked, so is uh, everything times C for a C greater than or equal to 1. So I remarked that. I, I already showed that a little bit, so I don't need to re-show that. Um, so to make this an n plus 1 tuple, We need to satisfy a few things. Let cx1 squared plus all the way up to cxn squared equal to cy squared. Yeah, cy squared. Um, Then we need z so that 1 cxn is greater than z and cy squared plus z squared is a square. Yeah, so we'll leave it like that. And that's really it. That's all you need to do is just tack on another number and as long as it satisfies these conditions, we're fine. So um, from our method in part b, Well, actually, what did we do? We had, uh, yeah, so uh, let's say let Z equal PY. So for some integer P. And if C, if, if PCY is, well, no, if PCR is a Pythagorean triple, then CY squared plus Z squared is equal to uh, take out the factor of y squared, c squared plus p squared, which is y squared, r squared, which is y r squared. So that would satisfy our second condition here. So I need to find a c and p so that cxn is greater than yp. Okay, so the question is, can we do that? If we can do that, then this method will work and we can keep extending. Now, how did we exactly do that in B part? Well, we didn't really do it that well. We just sort of listed out some Pythagorean triples. And the reason I did that in B is because I knew I was restricted. I knew C could only be so big, so there was a limit on our Pythagorean triples. But uh, is there is there such a limit now? Well, there isn't a limit, so in theory I should be freer. Both Xn and Yn are given from the n-tuple, so they're fixed. And they are integers. Uh, they're positive integers. Okay, now, hmm. What can we say? I 
don't like that the C and the P are sort of separated. If, if I bring X and Y in together, so I might say something like let A equal X and over Y. This is a nice fixed number. Then we need uh, dividing both sides by C and Y. We need a greater than PC. So can I always make, can I always find a triple PCR so that P over C is small enough? So we can find such PCR. So this is small enough, at least that's my hope. So, what can we do? I'm actually going to change that to can we, because I actually don't know if that can be done yet. I'm, I'm hoping it is, just because we've come kind of far in the question. Uh, I know A is, is greater than zero, so there's, there's some wiggle room. A is a fixed constant. We can always definitely find a rational in between A and zero, but can we find a rational that's part of a Pythagorean triple? That's the real question. Okay. Um, now, 5, 12, and 13 worked for us. And this is a particular kind of Pythagorean triple that's got some nice property. Like, we could use the general form of a Pythagorean triple. All Pythagorean triples look like this. Um, but I think if we just sort of look at uh, my favorite sort of sequence of Pythagorean triples, primitive Pythagorean triples even. 5, 12, 13, then there's one with 7, it's 24 and 25. Uh, 9, what was it? Um, two numbers that add up to 81, so 40 and 41. Oh, we saw this one earlier as well, so I feel like this, this is a good sequence to go with. But so we can make up a general Pythagorean triple that looks like um, we've already used K and uh, let's let's say B. So 2B plus 1, 2B, 2B plus 1 squared uh, minus 1 over 2, 2B plus 1 squared plus 1 over 2. So this is a triple. And let's just quickly double check why 2B. Why do I keep writing K? I want to write K personally, but uh, they've already used K in the question. So do 2B plus 1 squared minus 1 over 2 squared should be equal to 4B squared plus 4B plus 1 plus 4B squared plus 4B plus 1 minus 1 all over 2. Those cancel out, so 4b squared plus 4b plus 1 plus 2b squared. Oh, this, this never got squared. So uh, this thing squared. So 4b squared plus 4b plus 1 plus, uh, we'll say 4 b to the 4 plus 2b cubed plus b squared. So that's 4b to the 4 plus 8b cubed plus 8b squared plus 4b plus 1. Okay, and then um, this should be something like Two B squared plus B two B plus one all squared, I'm hoping at least. Um, let's see. What's what's the other side of the equation? So two 
to b plus 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared. Which is 2b squared plus 2b plus 1 all squared. And that should be 4b to the 4 plus 4b cubed plus... Two B squared plus four B cubed plus four B squared plus two B plus two B squared plus two B plus one squared, which is one. So four B to the four plus eight B cubed plus eight B squared plus four B plus one. Two expressions are equal, so it does work. It is a Pythagorean triple, just based off this pattern. Now, if we were to let P equal to 2B plus 1 and C be uh, 2, what was it, 2B plus 2, right? 2B squared plus 2B. And then in theory, if I choose a large enough B, I should be able to shrink this as much as I want. Uh, what can we do? We can do 2B plus 1 over 2B times B plus 1. Which is, I don't like this. Um, that, that should be able to be made as small as possible. Do I have to make an argument about that? Can I, can I write this in a nicer way? Something, something like that. Because I can't divide through the Bs, but um, the bottom here is a quadratic, whereas the top is a line, and quadratics always beat lines. But I'm not entirely sure what they would, would want as, as a viable answer. So that's always tricky. So, I mean, there's, there's probably another Pythagorean triple, I, or probably thousands of patterns that I could have picked. This is just my favorite one. Um, I can make this as small as I want. Well, I would probably just say, Since top is linear, bottom is quadratic, for a large enough B, this can be made smaller than A. Now A is given based on the triple, once you or the, the tuple. Once you make a new tuple, you'll get a new xn and a new y, and therefore a new a. And the process will start again. You'll have to probably try and take an even bigger Pythagorean triple. But there we go. Since it can be made smaller than a, this should uh, work. And, I, and we might be able to rearrange this to a different expression, but I'm, I'm confident. I'm happy just saying, you know, the bottom just grows like a line. The, the, or sorry, the top grows as a line. The bottom grows like a parabola, and parabolas always beat lines. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to get into, like, calculus-based reasoning or, or, or limits at infinity or anything like that, because it's a high school-level contest. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I, I would suspect that reasoning like that would, would be satisfactory to them. Okay, so that does it. That finishes off the 2002 paper. It's not, not 2002, 2012 paper. What am I talking about? It's, it's been a long question. But there we go, that was C4. So uh, the next open paper will be to the 2013. Uh, feel free to take a look at that and, but I, uh, uh, before I get to it. But if you're watching this in the distant future, I'm sure the 2013 is up somewhere on my channel. Feel free to join me for that. And as always, have yourself a wonderful day.